Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. So 
Step one, I found out that in the beginning, now, uh, in alcoholism, the, the part about the disease, making the idea clear to me and be fully aware that I've got a head, the mind, and I've got a place uh, in my life that I live, that there's a power there. There's a power that controls my life, my thinking, my living, walking, living, the life that I have, everything I do. There's a power behind this. And that power that's behind this is the disease that's already there that's permanent in me. It's a disease. It's something that cannot be changed. It's something that happened to me. So when step one came, now, while I'm in step one, I had to find out that in step one, they said in here that when I was powerless over alcohol, and they're mentioning alcohol now, they're talking about alcohol, and the acceptance of that, of being powerless over alcohol, by knowing what alcoholism is, made that possible now to have an effect on me so that the application, I'm admitting something that I'm powerless over. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop drinking yet. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to go in bars. That doesn't mean any of these things at all. That's that's a person or a character that I have become. I am that person. This is me, period. But I didn't understand wow. that me, period, meant that there's something else wrong with me. And that's in the second half of the first step. The first half was the fact that I drank when I was wet. I, I had a disease. I... Uh, had a mental obsession, a physical allergy. Uh, when I hit bottom, it brought me to Alcoholics Anonymous, to an alcoholic hospital. Hitting bottom only meant the fact that I went to the end of the line. I couldn't go any farther with money, with friends, jobs, uh, relationships with the world, or anything else. I lost everything. And the bottom that I hit was the bottom that, that I needed to know about only through, uh, not conditions now, but I had to get understanding that there was no, there was nothing else for me to, there was no place I could go, no place I could do anything. When I yelled for help, I yelled for help from another man because I was told for the period of time that he suffered these same things that I was suffering. And the bottom that I hit was the bottom that I needed to have so that I could have something other than alcohol and alcoholism as a way of life. That was what I needed to know. And that's what step one will do. The second half was so very important was the fact that I had to realize and know and understand that I got it from step one was that it's the disease of alcoholism is a condition of the mind and body that will be that way whether I am drunk or sober. doesn't make any difference. Uh, has, not, has no relationship to uh, the amount of any kind of uh, alcohol I'm drinking or how much or where or when or anything else like that. It's already established. It hasn't got anything to do with the wet side, although the wet side is the beginning of step one and brought me here. The second half of step one was the fact of understanding that alcoholism is the way I am, whether I am drunk or sober. But it also says in here, in step one, that I needed to know was, a, was what, it's, what it's relating to on the last, on the last page of one of the 12 by 12, what it says in there, why all of the insistence that every A must hit bottom first. The answer is that few people will sincerely try to practice the AA program unless they have hit bottom. For practice in the AA, the remaining 11 steps means the adoption and attitudes and action that almost no alcoholic who is still drinking can dream of taking. But when I was reading this, it says in here that almost no alcoholic who is still drinking can dream of taking. And so right away, I was not drinking. I was sober. I had come out of a hospital. But I didn't understand that the disease uh, that we're talking about, and one that we're coming from alcoholism, says in here that drinking and thinking, I have to understand that the first, there's two parts of step one. Well, the first part is drinking, the second part is thinking. The second part is where the unmanageable life is, where the alcoholism is. The first part of it is only where what brought me here, the bars, the drinking, the booze, the, the, uh, the life that I hit bottom in, I didn't hit bottom after I got here. I hit bottom before I got here. And the bottom I hit is when I did, when I did this year life that I lived. I did my own life and, and I went to hell in it. And I don't know that though. I'm blaming it still on everything else. But this is only step one coming from an understanding now that a, a life that's unmanageable, a life that, uh, that I, that brought me here, the unmanageable life I couldn't relate 
related, I always related that man for life to something that was going on, uh, a loss of job, a wife or troubles, fighting and accidents and things like that. And I didn't understand what the true meaning of an apple, of, of an unmanageable life in, in reference to an application, because I always related back to the things that I have already done or the things that I was drunk doing and the drunkenness brought these things into the picture. And here now, they're not even talking about that. So I had to change this here, this idea and here, what it says in here, who is still drinking can dream of taken. So I had to get away from that to understand that the 12 steps are, is a recovery program. It's a way of life. It's going on today. It isn't something that I'm going to get past, something that's going to be ended, something that's going to be completed. This here means that this Alcoholics Anonymous program now, without alcohol now, because I am sober, is where I am at. And so I have to know now that this is this has meaning behind it for me to understand. I cannot say that because I'm not drinking that fits you, not me. That's why I used to think that was an attitude that I always had. Sober now, Polish now. For now, I'm going to talk only about being sober, not reference to being drunk. So I'm not going to bring in any alcohol now because first half of one states we admit that we we're powerless over alcohol, and they're not going to mention that again. They're not going to use that again. They're going to go into the unmanageable life, into alcoholism. And so this here, last part here, said, who wishes to be rigorously honest and tolerant? Who wants to confess his faults to another and make restitution for harm done? Who cares anything about a higher power, let alone meditation and prayer? Who wants to sacrifice time and energy in trying to carry the atheist message to the next suffering? Know that the average alcoholic, self-centered in the extreme, doesn't care for this prospect, unless he has to do these things in order to stay alive in himself. Step one, I had to stay alive. I had to learn that I did come here for me, that there is a disease. There's something wrong with me. There's something going on now, and I can admit this condition, this character, this person, that I am. I have a twofold disease, and I've learned for myself this is twofold. It says twofold. Physical allergy with a mental obsession. No more than that, because I have not got any place past that and start using anything else as a, as lacking. This step is complete. It's full. Every word in it, everything that's needed is there. I don't have to think that I have to leave here and go somewhere else and find something else. This is something now that is in step one. Alcoholics Anonymous was written with 12 steps for a recovery program, and this is the first one. We must, I must understand that this is meant for me. For me, meaning I'm the alcoholic. I need this. They're talking about me. This is my life now. This got to, got to be, I got to know this all the time. Because I can't look beyond me or outside of me in comparison or in anything. I must remain in the brain of what I produce. Because this is what's going to have to, is what's needed and what's going to have to take place. And so I'm starting now into something that's very important. And this is step one. Understanding step one is alcohol, alcoholism. Alcohol, alcoholism. Now we're in alcoholism. Last night, I think the hardest thing, I believe which is the hardest thing for an alcoholic, is to try to try to understand an application, an understanding or an awareness that the steps are there to treat alcoholism. Not to treat alcohol now. Alcoholism. I didn't understand that this is a daily process, a daily, a daily living life. A positive thing. If I don't have this, I only have what I brought here. I got to understand this. I got to understand it to the point where this is very, very important. My sponsor talked to me a great deal in the beginning, before I was in steps, before I was anywhere at all, and it was all about the beginning of my life in Alcoholics Anonymous, and about first things first. Like, what's my major problem? In the beginning, it was the hospital. I had to be hospitalized. I was that sick. From the hospital, I had to, I had to get my, uh, my wife back, the job back, uh, uh, money to pay bills, uh, performance given. I didn't have them. I had him, I had the sponsor, helping me do the things that was necessary so that I would survive. 
And these steps were not in my life yet. They were not. But he trying to what he was doing to me was trying to help me make a beginning that was my beginning. Helping me see and have and do things now that I couldn't do by myself. I couldn't even begin to do these things or understand what's why they're needed or how to do them. Here already now, we were in last night we were in what I consider the ABCs of the alcoholic ego and self. And now we can start maybe doing a quick run through it, but one I think one has to be talked this way. I believe this. Because I can't skip one, or I can't only take a little piece of it, or just a small amount of it. Because my problem is alcohol and alcoholism. And if I skip over this now, I get into steps, because I started steps in the, without this, and I started out in step three. And when I started out in step three, uh, I had no success. I meant well, but couldn't do well. I was trying my very best, which brought me here, and my very best is never good enough. Drunk or sober, doesn't make any difference. And now, though, I'm getting now to something that I can do because step one is going to allow me now to understand when step two comes into the picture. In step two, it, when it talks in here about keen to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore to sanity. Uh, immediately, it had to be clarified to me that I have to do something other than what I've been doing, and I can't do what I should do. I have to keep remaining the same man, because I am the same man. No change has taken place in me. There's nothing different about me, because I found out that without alcohol, I'm the same man as I am with alcohol. And that was a, that was a shock. That was really something that, uh, that I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe that my problem was me. I just couldn't believe that my head was my problem. My thinking was my problem. My life was my problem. Because now they're going back inside of me, see. And so the disease of alcoholism with the understanding of what an unmanageable life is. So when I could, if I could come to believe that there's something else other than me that could help me or fix me or do something to me differently than I can do to me, then that must mean that there's something to make another beginning here. And that's what this step two did to me. So step two, uh, from now on, maybe we can go a little quicker because I want, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to stay too long on, on, on steps this way. But I believe though that if you're not, as an alcoholic, if you're not brought into Alcoholics Anonymous and with the alcoholic ego and self, and then brought through steps one, two, and three, where you can now stay, uh, go back to one and stay with what. You have learned in an understanding of the reason you're here, what to do, where to do it, how to do it, and then do it. Because this is a question now of doing. This is a question that each and every alcoholic now has to change, has to have a new method, has to have his alcoholism treated, has to have a daily reprieve, and so forth down the line, which comes from the application of step. So in step two, it said, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore to sanity. The biggest thing I have to understand here is that there is a there is a process of making a relationship with a power that's greater than me. And that's only a power. It started out of me as a power. Not a higher power, not a God, but a power. Something, and I could accept the fact that there is something better, or something bigger, stronger than me. Because everything I did, the booze was stronger, my motorcycle was stronger, it would kill you. You know, I knew that. And it was something. So I could understand that there is something other than this world, other than me, that could do better than me. And I might be able to let let that help me because I I didn't need help in sobriety I, because I could get sober but I couldn't stay sober and they were relating here something now that was entirely different. It said, "Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity." And so sanity, I had to get a definition in your twelve by twelve here. I believe that probably the best definition. That you could possibly say quickly is that what it says in here is that sanity is defined as soundness of mind. Soundness of mind meant exactly what I didn't have. I didn't have a mind that was very stable, very uh, dependable, very uh, uh, it couldn't produce anything that was consistent. It couldn't. Uh, uh, it was always influenced by other other things around me all the time. And so soundness of mind now became a part where the
the unmanageable life where I had to live in a world trying to make people perform, people do things that I wanted done a certain way. So soundness of mind, the unmanageable life, is is in step two. In step two meant now exactly the same thing. It's in the big book to me is with page 60 to 62, and that's a performance that I give, a performance that I live in, trying to be the right kind of person to make my world right, and it never does get right. <coughs> there is a power that's not me, so it says in here, came to believe that a power created in herself to restore us to sanity, meaning that it's not in any one of us, not in any one of us, the way I believe it means. It said, came to believe that a power greater than me, something outside of me, could make my life or make my brain well or whole or have soundness of mind. And that's only step two. And then in three, when I do... When I do make a decision to turn my will and life over to his care, over to his care, as I understood him. Understood him is the only part there that I was puzzled about because the will by that time, what I'm talking about now, when it said kick the uh, made a decision to turn my will, I had to understand my will now was pretty well clarified. My will was my thinking, my will was my feelings, my attitude, my will was my brain that produced energy and power, and that's why my will lives. It doesn't lie in my toe or arm or any place else. It lies in my brain. And this is the power that I that I know of, because this is the power that I've lived with, and I know it's there. And the life, though, the life was pretty evident that life means exactly wherever I am in a performance from my life today. Uh, the, uh, the will would be the mind uh, and what it produces and what it the way it goes and how it talks to itself and how it influences itself and how it powers itself and so on. And then the life would be the following of that, of the doing or the living in the disease of alcoholism and not being drunk. It would be in a performance, many years even in a performance, uh, and not being drunk or any place near it, and still acting like I always have acted before, getting, uh, getting upset. Getting uh, frantic about the way you treat me, or the way you don't consider me, or the way you uh, do things that I don't like you to do, and yet uh, I, I keep getting upset about it. I, I keep losing many minutes or many days of my life because of somebody else's performance, and I don't understand this stuff. The true meaning of the disease of alcoholism is the same thing. Is what the steps when it treats it is. The true meaning means that it's a living thing. That the alcoholism is not a dead thing. It's not a thing that I put aside. It's not a thing because I haven't got alcohol in me. It's not going to. It's not going to affect me now, because it's not the alcohol anymore. It's the thinking. It's the brain. It's me. It's who I am. I must do this because I'm going to get into steps pretty soon here. That I'm going to have to learn and understand a great deal about a change that's needed, about something else that has to be there instead of what's there now. And what's there now is the power of my mind, self, self, trying to regulate the, the day, the place, the time, the people, so that I will be satisfied, that I will be pleased, that I can have this life today. Because the disease of alcoholism when they say on page 85 that we're not cured of alcoholism, what we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. And that means that from this moment on, meaning when I first started or first come to AA to find this way of life, meaning that that is an ongoing living process because that is a way of life that's a continual way of life. And so there is no more of getting past something, learning something to its fullest and not easy anymore. This is a daily reprieve, what I'm talking about now, for an alcoholic like me with alcoholism, meaning my brain must be treated and have God there, the daily treatment, because when I when I make a decision to turn my will and life over to care of God, that's what I have to turn over. I have to turn over everything, everything that I can produce in my mind or in my body, my performance. I must do this. Because it says in there, as we understood, and, I, and, and you know another thing, you might as, well, you might as well talk about it, or might as well say, is that from this moment on, meaning step one on, 
that business now uh, of, of that pronoun or using words like we, ourselves, us, I had to stop doing that because I used that instead of using it in a collective sense of the way this thing was written for everybody, all alcoholics, I started using it to single out me away from you, thinking in terms of I've done this, I don't need this. You need this. I don't need this. They're talking about you, not me. See, this is important to me because, you see, I want us to remember something that's so very important. I am the one that's an alcoholic. I'm the one that's sick. I'm the one that does the damage. I'm the one that lives with my brain. I don't live with your brain. And so I've got to keep this as a frontal thing, a, a thing that's always present is that my life is in jeopardy today if my alcoholism isn't being treated. It's really my truly mean this now. My life is in jeopardy. Now, you've got to understand that it doesn't take years, it doesn't take great amount of experiences, it doesn't take a lot of understanding or a lot of information or a lot of uh, education, money, or anything else, so that you have to have anything else other than who you are before you can have this. Because when I got here, I had to learn that what I, when I got here, everything that this year recovery program will present will treat my alcoholism today. Meaning today, after 38 years later, over 38 years later, my alcoholism has to be treated today or it will produce again an unmanageable life where I'll be restless, irritable, discontent, full of fears, depression, anxiety, hate thoughts. Everything is going to appear again, again, again today and destroy my life today. Because I talk to me and I listen to me and I do the power of me and that is what I do and that's what brought me here. I must remain the same man as I've always been without the recovery program of the 12 steps, which are the principles which will change me. If there is no change, there is no steps, there is no message, there is no nothing there but the plain, plain old story again. Alcoholism in its fullest bloom is being presented all the time. Step three. Step three in here tells in here, and it's it's uh, it, it, it's pretty it's pretty quick. Uh, they're talking in step. The thing about step three, I believe, is when you make a decision, you talk about the alcoholism, how alcoholism will take the decision away, and when it takes it away, of course, then you have to appear as the power, and how alcoholism will only let me, as an alcoholic, let God take care of my handicap or my most devastating trouble or thing that's wrong with me, meaning alcoholism and me, meaning that that I will go any length at all. I'll go to the hospital. They'll strap me down. They'll fill me full of formaldehyde. They'll take me out of there and they'll start pumping vitamins in me. But see, I'm letting them do all of them things and I'm letting my sponsor talk to me the way he talks to me and I'm doing all these things. But you see, the only thing that I'm doing, I'm letting something happened to the alcoholic in me about my alcohol only in reference to that not and what i'm talking about now is that i like i had to go to my job that i had been fired from as a service manager i had to go and take another job back on the, uh, the line as a line mechanic and that was because my sponsor wanted me to do that because he set it up he said go there and do that my brain, and that wasn't to treat my wife the way I talked to her, the way I looked at her, the way I treated her. That was to treat me so that I could work and I could do these things. And see, in the steps, this year had to come to light pretty soon, pretty quickly. It's the fact that I run my life that way. I will let God in for a certain purpose, a certain reason, to fix a certain trouble, and it, it has to pertain to that and that alone. And then after that's taken care of it, <clears throat> I'm going to do my thing now. I'm going to take care of the rest of my life because I don't need God there. I don't need his, his nothing there. It, it just isn't necessary. 
I can handle that so long as you'll handle my troubles with the booze. So this would be step three now. Coming from this year, alcoholism, ego, and stuff, it's understanding that I need something more than just my alcohol and my alcoholism, which is reference to the alcohol, fixed. Not the alcoholism that needs all of my affairs and all of my life, but only the part that handles the be the drunken side. Okay. And so step three, I think, is where it should be brought to light and talked about coming from where we're at now. Because when it talks in here, and it's on page 37 and then 12 by 12, and it says, starts, starts at the top, and we did this last night too, it says, but, but the moment our mental or emotional or independent is in question, how differently we behave, how persistently we claim the right to decide all by ourselves, just what we shall think and how we shall act. Oh yes, we'll weigh the pros and cons of every problem. We'll listen flatly to those who advise us, but all the decisions are going to be ours alone. And that's exactly what I'm talking about now, about living in a world now with no time factor, no years of sobriety, or a lot of years of sobriety, either way, making no difference, and then all of a sudden decide all by myself that I'm going to treat you different. I'm going to think different, and I don't care who you are either. You could be you could be somebody I love very dearly, somebody that really has busted their neck for you, has really showed you kind, considerate years and time and events. But I'm still going to treat you the way I want to treat you, because I'm going to cut talk to me and I'm going to get the authority from my mind to rip you wide open to think that whether I express these on an, on an open on a verbal plane or not doesn't make no difference. I'm going to do it one way or another. I'm going to think that you mistreated me. I'm going to think that you didn't consider me. And in turn, I'm going to be hostile. I'm going to be angry to you. And I'm going to perform that way. And yet I don't relate that to alcoholism. I don't relate that to a brain that's doing that. And so I have now the same kind of life, except my alcohol is being helped and treated. Because I do allow a power greater than me, which I learned in I learned about soundness of mind. I learned a great deal about ego and who I am. And in step three, this step three, it says in here, and this to me is so very important. It says in here, then as it explained and that the other eight steps in the AA program can be practiced with success only when step three is given a determined and persistent trial. This statement may surprise newcomers who have experienced nothing but constant deflation and a growing conviction that human will is of no value whatever. They have become persuaded, and rightly so, that many problems besides alcohol will not yield to a headlong assault powered by the individual alone. But now it appears there are certain things which only the individual can do. Now this is the part I mean. It says this again, but now it appears that there are certain things that only the individual can do. All by himself, in the light of his own circumstances, he needs to develop the quality of willingness. When he acquires willingness, he is the only one who can make the decision to exert himself. Trying to do this is an act of his own will. See, they put, they put the whole story now on me as the alcoholic. That's an act of my own will, something I'm going to have to do, something that's in me now to do this, but I got to understand I have the power that came from two, a power that can do this for me, not three. The decision in three is when I make decided that I'm going to use that power. I must have that power. I must have this God as I understood now, and I understand. Four, you know, four is talking about an inventory, and I think four is one of the steps that is a, to me, it's very, it's very, uh, uh, it's not easy, nothing's easy to do when you have to do something you don't know how to do. I know that. But I think that it's an easy process to do once you understand what it is that you have to do. Because I didn't, I was always in doubts of why, why that, uh, uh, why anybody would have to make a searching and fearless moral inventory, say, because I didn't know the purpose behind it or what the inventory is. And so, I don't, uh, maybe we, I can run through this a little quicker and get going here a little bit more. And so 
I had to learn first that the inventory is my inventory. An inventory of defects of character are the things that I use for my life. Uh, these are not things that I have done in the past that uh, are bothering me. These are the things that I live with day by day. This is a way of life and a character that I am is built on that character that does that things, that he lives in defects. Defects I have to learn are things that are the, what, the, what the word describes. They're defective. There's something wrong with them. They're not the, they're not the thing to do because they produce things that cause trouble. Uh, here, uh, of all kinds of uh, uh, trouble with my life because these defects of character are always based on, on, on the same selfish self. They're always centered around uh, what I believe, what I want, what I can get away with their life. It's my whole happiness, my whole alcohol life is based on defects of character. And if they're present today, then they're the things that I use today. They are not things I did 10, 20, 30 years ago or anything like that. They are not. The things that bother me and upset me and make my life unmanageable today, the things that I do are the things I do today that do that. And because I live and every day I'm in. Although I go backwards and I go forwards, but I do the I do the performance today. The other performances I already have done, whether it was yesterday or the tomorrow where I couldn't do the book. The today is the day that I must talk about, I must look into the brain and see what's in the brain of my brain today. And so as the, I had to I had to have you clarified the defects of character. This is something only for me that I had to do, is that I had to understand that defects of character are things that I, as the alcoholic, do that I shouldn't do. Defects of character are things that I do that I should not do. And so that's simplifying it, and we can go in deeper than that, but we'll try to go a little quicker here in this. In five, it's in, in five, it, where it says, we admitted we're powerless over alcohol. Uh, in, in the, we admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrong. I could admit by then, I could admit this to anybody, anybody. Because at one time I learned how it, to admit things, to get past things, to get rid of things, to uh, to be acceptable, uh, acceptable again, or to get back in good graces again uh, by uh, admitting things. Uh, sure, I'll admit see, uh, a lot of things. And so it's easy, it's, it was easy for me to talk to a God that I just was learning, a power that I was just learning. And it was very, it wasn't hard. There was only one thing that I ever did that I wouldn't admit to anybody else. I used to say this at meetings even. I said there are things that I have done in my life I'll tell no man. I used to say that. I really did that. And there came a day that I did that. I had to do that too. Because even in the step, in the, in the club I hear, it's talking in here that uh, this, this here has to be done or it's possible I will get it. Probably, I will get drunk. See, and so, but I didn't know the true meaning of step five, because five, five is whether somebody else starts to come in the picture. The God is already there, and I'm there. But there's somebody else. Now that somebody else uh, wasn't my problem. See? That wasn't. That isn't why. That isn't why I couldn't do that step, or I didn't do it thorough, or I didn't do it to what for the effect it's there for. Uh, what I did, I I didn't understand what they're saying in here that admitted to God. I already I, I'm in that process, but I'm, the next part is to ourselves. That's something that was wrong. That's something there that I didn't wouldn't consider didn't consider and didn't get any benefits from the application or the principles of this step about I wrote the inventory and the exact natures of the wrongs were up there and admitting to God was something I could do and I could tell you whoever you were my sponsor I could tell you also but I wouldn't accept it and I wouldn't believe that I just wouldn't do it because I thought, shit, I wrote it. Why should I have to do that? That's me. But deep down inside, my whole life in sobriety, not drunkenness now, was always running from problems, running from me, running from my deeds, my thoughts, my actions, 
uh, not accepting me for who I am. And I didn't understand step five, the purpose behind it, what it produces. And this year was when the simple part admitted to that to ourselves, to ourselves, meeting me, now to me, admitting to me the exact nature of my wrong. Because I could, I could, I could do many things. I could talk about them, but I can walk away from them and still be that same person, still be capable of these of these exact wrongs. Because I did not believe what I wrote, I did not accept what I wrote. I went through a process, and I did it. That's step four. But five, I don't believe that. I don't know if you, if you understand this, or you know this, or you even do this. I don't know that. I did it. I did this. And you know, it says, it says in here, uh, it talks in here about how admitting defeat, the, their defects with another person is, is very ancient, and, you know, and it's validated in every century, century and so forth like that. And it goes on to say a lot of things. But it didn't talk in here about me, and what it does to me as far as when I don't do this. And I don't understand that this here past I have, or this performance that I have given, or this person that I am, that the door they're talking about, it, I'm leaving the door open. I was running scared all the time because I didn't know, I was always waiting to be caught. I was always waiting for something that was there still in me. And I don't want you to find out. I don't want you to know about this. You see, and the full benefit of five I didn't have for some years because I did do certain things and I did keep it away from you, meaning what it says in here, to another person. But I did not allow myself to be that person who I am and what I did and the way I live. So I had to carry now from this point forward, I had to go with something wrong with me inside. And I had to start living a life with the self-honesty I was living, I was, I was living a lie. And I knew that. And step five is where I didn't know where the trouble really lied. I didn't know my troubles and why I was acting and performing the way I was. Because my alcoholism was not being treated in respect to where I was at in my life as far as what it's needed here. But they're taught the benefit of five, I didn't receive it. Because I used to even say I would tell no man. And so that was a, that, that to me was, was was a great problem for me. That really that really hurt me. The five uh, most of five I believe is uh, what I consider a real benefit of it is is what it is what I'm talking about now about self, about myself about being free of anything that I have done, plus anything that's still there. Uh, it, I think that each and every one of us, you have to be, uh, you have to, you have to have that. You have to be totally, totally uh, believe the way, what you wrote. I think that you have to write what you have written. You accept it. I think, uh, I think that, the deflation that's needed on the ego factor, I think that it's there. It's there. Uh, I think the full, the full, uh, the full benefit of five now is something that if you and I would sit on a one to one and start talking about the, the true application of five, I think it would start going into something that's really, really uh, eye opening. It's really a strong, strong thing. Because if there is something that's needed to be done for an alcoholic, and once you find out what it is and you get released from it or you get rid of it or it's not in your brain or it's not something you take to bed or it's not something that affects you in other affairs and all that, it's, a, it's really a, a tremendous uh, uh, relief, eye-opening, uh, progress. and uh, it's, a, it's a total thing. And, and six, you know, the, the, the six is what you've heard, you've, uh, you've heard me... Uh, talk a little bit about six and that, and uh, I'm not going against anybody, I'm not trying to prove anything or anything like that, uh, is 
that I, but I still was taught though, when it says in six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And I've learned that each step, for me, when I was taught steps and what I was told about steps, that each step has its own function. One step doesn't rely upon the next step for that step. In other words, two is two by itself to do a, to do something, uh, to have uh, something that's going to add to your life without needing to know what's ahead of two. Two, is, I believe, is like three, like this. And so I believe six is like this, too. I believe six is by itself only because you're in the sixth uh, step or the sixth part of the book or the application, or however you want to word it. And I don't think you have to know anything beyond six to have six in your life. I don't think any steps do. And so I don't, I, what I'm referring to is somebody or, or thinking that the next step is going to help this step better. I think that this step is going to be there so that I can do the next step, not the reverse. And so I, I believe this now, I really believe this strongly. I won't argue with you about it or anything, but I believe six is all by itself because it says what it says in six, I believe is something that you must, as an alcoholic, you must do now because this is the way of life. This is going on now. And so it says we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And you can single it out and say the, the one word means this more than the, it's more important and all that. But I don't think so. I think it says that exactly we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Meaning now the things that were in my brain, the things I brought here, the things, the character that I am, what I think, what I can produce, the whole life I am, who I am, I'm going to have now, I'm, I'm entirely ready to have God remove these. And so it isn't a, it isn't a question of trying to uh, remove only part of them and keep part of them. And that, although that, I will do that probably, and I have done that probably and so on. I think, though, that the understanding or the awareness of the intent of what six, six says, what it means, where it's at is pretty clear. So that I don't have to go from six now and carry into the next step something so that it will help six. I don't think so. And so now we're, we're what we're talking about is the, is the defects of character, the things I talked about in the beginning now about the disease of alcoholism, where it's at, what it produces, the way it thinks, and the way it acts, and why it's like that, is what we're talking about now in step six. If I want to hold back, or if I want to keep the power of self to use anything at all in my life today, whether it's jealousy, whether it's envy, whether it's... Uh, Anything at all that I know how to do or I live with or which has been explained in four and then five says the exact nature of these wrong. If I want to go ahead this day and be a mean son of a bee again, or if I want to be a jealous again, or if I want to be a special person again to be considered over and above anybody else, or if I want special recognition and all of these things like that, then I must accept. What that produces, meaning that that alcoholism is not being treated because I'm using that same character for my life today that I got here with, which was starting to be explained to me in the alcoholism ego itself. It also started to explain in, in step one that this is a disease and it's in me, it's, this is my mind, not yours, and that the unmanageable life, the second half of, her, of one, of step one, the unmanageable life is being produced. So that my life today, now I'm not talking about years, or so, although I could be talking about years, I'm just talking about alcoholism and an alcoholic me as I live my life with no reference to being better because I've got a lot of meetings behind me and i got a lot of years or I don't have a lot of meetings or I don't have any years because I'm talking about a disease. But in step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And if I want to use defects of character, in other words, if I want to be the same character that I've always been before, and I want to do this today, I must pay a price today for acting like that. I must do now something. And when I do this something, I'm going to have to accept what follows that. 
because this is going to be out of my doing. This is going to be out of my defects. This is something that I'm going to do that I shouldn't do. This is something that I know how to do, and every time I do it, I still have the same results. I'm restless, irritable, discontent. I'm full of jealousy, anger, fear, frustration, impatience. Everything is coming back into my life again today after a lot of years. Only because the disease isn't being treated, meaning that my mind is not with a power greater than me. It's not with something that can do for me what I can't do for myself. It's back to self again. The disease of alcoholism is my life. And I'm sober. And I got a lot of years sober. And I know a lot of el I know a lot of application of steps, but I'm not doing it. But I don't have any free time. I don't have any reprieves now. And so I don't I, I I just don't understand this because I do it. I get running scared. I'm walking on eggshells. I'm afraid of being found out again. I'm waiting to see or I'm trying to see something that's not there. I'm, I'm getting ready to have a situation, and they haven't even presented the situation yet. I don't like the way you look at me sometimes. I don't like the way you say certain things to me sometimes. I don't understand. That's what's wrong with me. That isn't what's wrong with you. I'm the one that's paying the price that I don't want to pay again. I don't want to be a restless or a discontent. But I still want to be able to tell you how to perform, what to say, what to do. I don't like the way you arrange furniture, meaning dishes in the kitchen or anything like that. And so I'm willing to raise hell, but I'm sober. And so I can say, it's all right. They shouldn't act that way. They shouldn't do this again. And then I'm going to have to suffer now. Because I'm back to self, and self can produce only what it can produce, and that's what's wrong with me anyway. I got a brain, and I'm ready to jump on your. I gotta watch this. Where I got a brain that tells me I should, I should do something. I should retaliate. I should show you. I should let you know. And when I go to bed that night, I can't sleep. Because my brain talked to me, and I listened to it, and I have to pay the price now. And I don't want to pay the price, but I have to. This is what alcoholism, this is what the 12 steps, and step six now, when it says in there, we're entirely ready. You know what I used to cop out on six was, in the back of six, at the end of six, and they're talking in here, it says in here that, Let's suppose that what appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim toward perfection. And I would say, well, you, I can't give it perfection. I'm a human being. And so I would just write that off as, a, as an excuse that I could do this and get away with that kind of behavior because this is what it says. It says, we note that some delay might be part. The word in mind of a rationing alcoholic could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how oh, very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm not going to, but I'm certainly not going to hurry in any, in, 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 not going to hurry any. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many other, uh, any other pleasant, uh, uh, another pleasant rationalization. I'm always willing to look for loopholes. I'm always willing to excuse my behavior myself. I'm always willing to say that there's some. I have defects of character, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually get rid of them, or they're something that uh, uh, I'm working on, and uh, things like along that nature. See, you know, that I'm gonna use these things. I'm gonna get away with it too, because I can do this and satisfy self. I can't satisfy God, but I can satisfy self because I'm doing this for self. I'm doing it with self, not with God. Defects of character. I don't care what alcoholic, I don't give a darn who you are as an alcoholic. Defects of character are very, very understandable, very noticeable, very evident when I live by defects of character. I've got a brain, and this brain, when it uses defects of character, upsets me.
bothers me. Makes me talk to myself. Makes me walk around kicking myself in the hind end for thinking, saying, and doing things that I have to pay a price for. Defects of character are always involved with somebody else. I'm always hurting somebody else. I'm going to look to a way to hurt them. Defects of character is a person I don't want to be. Defects of character are things that in step six, I know for a fact, my own life, that as each thing is presented to me, that becomes evident to me, that I'm quick to answer back to you uh, the things that I can think about in my head to get ready to, to show you who you really are, are things that are going to kill me, not you. Because the character I am is based on my mind, by what's in there for the power that's going to control me. When I become the authority again for my thinking, and we're in step six now, this is a real, this is really a problem now uh, for an alcoholic like me to be able to stay sober and still manage his life and still demand out of you a performance, which I should have learned down in two, that I'm still doing this today, regardless of how many years you've been sober, but I'm talking now about a recovery program that I don't use or don't have or it's not in my life for my life today. And I will accept that. And I will continually do that. I'm an alcoholic. I do this now. And I have done this. It ain't right. Because I'm going to the same place I've always go to. And I'm going to be that same character I've always been. And I'm going to miss the mark. And I'm going to be left out. And I'm not going to be able to be where God wants me to be. I'm not going to be the man God wants me to be. Because I won't let God in my life for that reason. I still stay there for the reason I claim is right. The reason I want my life a certain way. And God says no. That I still insist upon having it that way. We should, when we get, when we get done here, as quick as I can get done here, is that step six is a step that to its fullest purpose has to be talked about, has to be explained, has to be shown, it has to be related to an alcoholic so that he can see himself as he is, as he lives, as he thinks, as he is, period. Step six. Because when you're not ready to have God remove all defects of character, you will perform will be the same man that you've always been. And listen, I'm going to tell you another thing is, I myself was never, never free, and never, never was out of this at all, until another alcoholic got a hold of me one day, and he rattled my brains, and that's going to be in the next step. And then he showed me and told me, and he related to me, a performance that I must give. And if I don't give this performance, it's the same thing here as in six now. This is for me. I can't leave this out. I can't I can't walk free of this and say it's been done. I must have the full application of step six because of what step six does. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, meaning me and my brain, my life. The whole thing now, without this, I can't go any farther in the program of recovery as a way of life. I can't. I must stop. I cannot go into step seven. Now, that's my opinion. Now, that there is something that I'm stuck on because of my life and what happened to me. And also, I've seen a great many other alcoholics that have benefited and have needed and have done this. And they, too, are the person. They are that person that God said they can. So, am I taking too long on this stuff? No, Is this too long? No, no, right on. Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to get too deep into the step, you know. But there are certain things about this step because steps you can. I, you can, I can go for. I can go uh, into uh, an application that just. It's just endless. Thing. It's just endless. The reason it's endless is because the mind that I have. In the, in the performance that I'm in, I'm never staying in one place where I have been. I have been there, but I leave there. And so what I've done there, 
I need to do something more, and, and I have to continue in that way of living. I have to continue going so that this here application of the principles is what's making me go. It's, it's, it's what's treating my alcoholism. Because if it isn't treated, I have to go backwards, meaning I have to go back to the proven way, uh, the known way that I can do, the known way I can do. See, because I'm always willing and I'm quick to go the way that I know how to go. I do this all the time. But I find out that all Alkies do that. They would rather do something they know how to do, even when it's wrong, rather than to do something new they don't know how to do. And that, that's the disease, though. That's the alcoholism disease of the mind being so running scared, being so sure he's right, or whatever it is in there at that time, to instead, of, instead of attempting to allow a power, a God, a, a way of life that's already there, and it's constant, and it's proven, Instead of going that way, I'd rather go the other way. Because this time I might make it different and I might change the situation and, it, and I get by. So I think I'll try this way first. And I can keep up. But see, that's the disease of alcoholism. That's doing the opposite of what the steps were meant to do. Step seven. Somebody asked when we move our shortcomings. Uh, most of you guys know this very well, a great deal about this. You don't have to be told. I know you don't, but maybe we can run through quick uh, because of, of the, uh, uh, the video there. Uh, this, this alcoholic got a hold of me and, and talked to me and told me about that he thought that there was something I needed to know, something I should consider, and that that's something that, uh, that he did, that he could do, could show me something that if I would try it and could uh, could benefit by it. I could keep it and keep doing it, but benefit by it by uh, doing more of it and so on. Anyway, we got into the step seven about shortcoming. Shortcoming meaning uh, essentially that shortcomings were things that were lacking and I felt short of and they were admitted. They were things that weren't being done. Uh, they weren't there and so on like that. And so then he referred to the defects as, as things that I was doing that I shouldn't do. And shortcomings then were things I should do that I wasn't doing. And then he started to relate this into a performance that I would then, he started out with a toothpick on the floor, uh, picking the toothpick up, and I'd say, why should I pick a toothpick up when I got to do anything? And he said, well, he said, especially in your own home, and he put that in there, uh, was the fact that in my home, I was the king of the castle, and I considered that I don't have to do many things there, you know, because I'm entitled to have someone else uh, do whatever's there. And so he said, well, he said, if you don't pick that toothpick up, somebody else the only thing he was showing me was that there's a world that I live in that the other people are there too, and that there's a point or there's a place uh, that a performance has to be given that's going to come from me to this world that I have, meeting people. I have to start going to people. And so here's where I learned a great deal about who I am. I'm an alcoholic now, and I'm, and I'm a taker. I've always been a taker. Whether I was drunk or sober, and I'm a real taker. I want from you everything I can get from you, but I don't want to pay back anything. I don't want to give you anything. I don't want to share anything unless I have to. And if I have to, I'll go along with the fact that you're a pretty good guy, so I'll share something with you, but not you, because I don't like you. I don't think you, you, you can do me any good. So I'll consider the other person. Now, this isn't drunkenness now. This is being sober. This is a thought process. This is an attitude that I have already established. This is in me. And so I found out that I'm a taker when I'm sober. I want things. And I want them my way. And I want them now. And I want them under conditions that I don't have to answer to. And I expect these things. And I want these things. And I want them out of women. And I want them out of men. I want them out of everybody I come in contact with. I'm a special person. I need to be handled special. And I want consideration over and above every other person, every other alcoholic. Now that's me. I'm an alcoholic. Now the self-honesty that I learned from my sponsor, the self-honesty I learned from my sponsor right in the very beginning was exactly about this right now. About how I, how I live in a world I want to control this world. I want this world to be like I want it to be. And I'm 
going to push and shove, and I'm going to try to make that happen all the time. And if you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to hate your guts. I'm an alcoholic. i got a brain that's full of alcoholism because it's my brain. And as long as my brain is in my head, it's going to do the same thing to me that it always does. And the only way I think that I'll ever, ever be able to get rid of that without the 12 steps of the program recovery is get a head transplant. Because I can't, I, that's a fact, I can't use that brain in a power form for my life. I can't. It will, if there's too many variables out there. There's too many people that say no. There's too many people say no, I can't give you that. I won't do that. There's too many things happening around me that I can't stand. And I can't live in this world when I can't stand it. Everything's wrong. And I should have learned or I should know that even when I was drinking, but I didn't. Because I took another drink and then everybody got nice people again. See, everything changed. Then when I got sober, I couldn't take that drink no more. And so I got this world that I live in now. And that the, these steps here right now, the intent of them, of the principles that are behind it, will make that world that I live in the world that's, that's acceptable. That it's not a mess. Well, it's not full of hateful people. It's not full of disappointments, failures. It's not full of struggle. It's not full of the things that my eyesight and my ears produce. It's not. But so the shortcomings that are in here, the shortcomings started out, like I told you, on the two pick on the floor. It started out in a performance that I had to keep giving. The performance I had to keep giving now was a performance that was based what it says in here. And this here has to be really clarified, really understood. And it starts right out in step seven. It says, since this step so specifically concerns itself with humility, we should pause here to consider what humility is and what the practice of it can mean to us. Indeed, the attainment of greater humility is the foundation principle of each of the AA's 12 steps. For without some degree of humility, no alcoholic can stay sober at all. Nearly all AA's have found, too, that unless they develop much more of this precious quality that may be required just for sobriety, they still have a much chance of becoming truly happy. Without it, they cannot live to much useful purpose or in adversity, be able to summon the faith that could meet any emergency. Man, that's that's real. That's real. That's covering a lot of ground. That's that's really important to know. Now this is step seven. This isn't about being angry, hostile, angry, or full of jealousy, envy, hate, uh, whatever you can name. This isn't about this now. This is totally removed from there, because this right now is what I learned down in, in first in the big book. Top of page 63. And then I learned down in two now, I came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us or could restore me to sanity. And this means now about something that I have to live in a world now where I have to perform. I have to do things now. But how am I going to do these things and what, am I, what are these things and who, who am I going to do it to? This is what this is about. Because they're talking in here about humility, and without it, it says that we can't even stay sober at all. We don't have some degree of it. And it talks in here about humility. Humility is a word and an idea at a very bad time of it in our world. Not, not only is the idea misunderstood, which it was me, is that the word itself is often intensely disliked. Many people have an even or not an acquaintance with humility as a way of life. Now that's what's important. Humility as a way of life is what this is going to lead into now. Because humility as a way of life must mean that to produce humility, meaning that the performance that I'm giving is not for recognition, not for acknowledgement, not for uh, purposes that I that I want or anything like that. This means that humility is doing something without even being found out. This means that doing something that you will benefit from, I won't. Because I'm, I'm a taker, I'm not a giver. And I know that, see. But see, I'm willing to like I did before. I'm willing to write about me, but I'm not willing to accept me. See? That's what fire does. That's where I missed the boat. See? I didn't understand who was going to do what to who and who was to benefit by this. See? Because I was always looking elsewhere, meaning away from me, 
for satisfaction, for for performance. I want you to perform. You don't want to perform. Hell with that noise. See? Don't you know that I'm a special person? I need to be considered over and above anybody else. And so this is why step seven is in an order form, a logical order form of a place in the steps so that this performance here now will allow me now to go into a world that I live in and start living in that world for the purpose that I should live, to do God's will, to serve God and man, meaning that I should now stop being a taker. Stop being a taker. I got to perform now for my happiness, for my useful purpose in life, true meaning now about what it says in the foreword of this here book right here. And this here is, is something that, that I believe that any alcoholic, any alcoholic, has to know this. It says AA's 12 steps are a group of principles, spiritual in their nature, which if practices the way life can expel the obsession to drink and enable the sufferer to become happily and usefully whole. Now we're up in seven. I'm starting to be usefully whole. Because I'm not looking now elsewhere. I'm not doing things for my pleasure, my benefit, my way, my need. I'm not doing this now. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go away from there. But if I have to find out how to do this, I must understand a great deal. And step seven is really clear to me it is about what it says and what it does. And it isn't clear because I've done this in a long time or anything like that. It's clear because the intent of what it says here, when it says, humbly ask them to remove our shortcomings. Now I know what shortcomings are. And humility and humbleness, I know what that means now. I do know. So, and then it says in here, this lack of anchorage, any permanent values, this blindness to the true purpose of our lives produced another bad result. For just as long we were convinced that we could live exclusively by our own individual strength and intelligence for just that long was a working faith and a higher power impossible. Now what they were talking about here, I, I knew I knew immediately when they said things like this, for just so long as we were convinced that we could live exclusively by our own individual strength and intelligence. Because I was, I was sober for years, over two and a half years, and I was still arranging my life, pushing and shoving. With my, with my brain, being as smart as I am and who I am, I ought to be able to figure this out. I ought to be able to make this work. And this is, this is, this is me all the time. And no matter where I go, there's no God, there's no power, there's no nothing else. But here I am doing this, so, and I recognize this, and I understand this now, because it says, this was true even when we believed that God existed. We could actually have earnest religious belief, which remained barren because we were still trying to play God ourselves. As long as we play, play self-reliance first, a genuine reliance upon a higher power was out of the question. That basic ingredient of all humility, a desire to seek and do God's will, was missing. And that's the way an alcoholic like me, with alcohol in my brain, that's what I produce. I produce this here, what it says, exactly that. That I was, I was putting me first, over and above that. I was letting God help me stay sober. I was, I was willing to... to to know that a power is over alcohol, and I was willing to have God <coughs> stop the alcohol and the alcoholism. But that's all. But up here it's saying something now, which I've already covered greatly, greatly in the steps. It says in here that as long as we place self-reliance first, a genuine reliance on a higher power was out of the question. It, to me, that that's, what, that's, that's something. And so it started out here now about from there I had to go into uh, uh, here next page. It said during this process of learning up more about humility, the most profound result of all was the change in our attitude toward God. And this was true whether we had been believers or unbelievers. And they're covering everybody, and they're covering me because I was truly an unbeliever. And so we began to get over the idea that the higher power was sort of a bushwick pincher to be called upon only in an emergency. The notion we would still live our own lives, God helping a little now and then began to evaporate. And I was doing exactly that. 
Many of us who have thought ourselves religious look to the limitations of this attitude, refusing to place God first. We had deprived ourselves of his help, but now of the words of myself, I have nothing the Father do with the work began to carry a bright promise in me. So, in that, what, as an alcoholic with alcoholism, it says in here, the notion that we would still live our own lives, God helping a little now and then, began to evaporate. And that's exactly what I was, how I was living and what I was doing, is because I wanted to be sober, and I wanted to be a winner, and I wanted all these things that was around me at meetings and you guys and everything else like that. And I wanted many, many things, but I was not willing to pay the price to, to do what was necessary to do to have that. I wanted to be sober, but I still wanted to have me as the authority for my life. I wanted to be able to call upon my brains to the way I should act and what I should say and do, and how I should do this. And yet it says here, hey, I can't do that. I just can't do it. So right before that, it, took, it says here something else now. It's, this, this, was a, this is important, and I'll get off of it. It says, but when we have taken a square look at some of these defects, this is step seven. It says, but when we have taken a square look at some of these defects, a square look at some of these defects, what would that be? Would that be step four? <laughs> And have discussed them with another, that would be step five. And have become willing to have them removed, that would be step six. And thinking about humility, our thinking about humility, commences to have a wider meaning. By this time, in all probability, we have gained some measure of release from our more devastating handicaps. Our most devastating handy, more devastating handicaps, to me, was, was, was very obvious. We just got through making the list, we got through sharing them, admitting it, accepting it, and saying, that's me, and now we're going to have God take them, get ready to help, get tired ready to have them take a move or wall of them. It says, we enjoy moments in which there is something like real peace of mind. To those of us who have hitherto known only excitement, depression, or anxiety, in other words, to all of us, this newfound peace is a priceless gift. Well, what newfound peace? Because I'm in step, no, step seven. So it says in here, to those of us who have hitherto known only excitement, depression, or anxiety. Well, see, I didn't, right away now, i got to stop. i got to think of what they're talking about. They're talking about an unmanageable life. They're talking about alcoholism. They're talking about something that I know a great deal of. Because I do know what it's like to be restless, irritable, and discontent. I do know what it's like to be so damn anxious, I can't. I can't sit still. I can't. I gotta move. I gotta go somewhere. I gotta do something. I can't stay here and benefit from nothing because I'm talking to here and the authority says, "Get out of here. Go, man, go." And I do, and I go. But here it says differently. It says in here exactly this. It says to those of us who have hitherto known only excitement, depression, or anxiety, anxiety. In other words, to all of us. This newfound peace is a priceless gift. Something new, indeed, has been added. Where humility has formerly stood for a force feeding an humble pie, which was me. I always was eating humble pie. I was always telling somebody, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I didn't, I, and I'm sober. I'm not drunk. And I'm trying to clear myself all the time by eating humble pie. And then turn right around and do it again. It says this. Where humility has formerly stood for a force feeding a humble pie. That means now, without steps, without treatment of alcoholism, just living in the unmanageable life with alcoholism, that's the way I am. But then it says also this. Where humility has formerly stood for a force feeding a humble pie, it now begins to mean the nourishing ingredient which can give us serenity. This is what I wanted all the time. But this year... Is something that I can't understand this kind of stuff. It don't make sense. What the hell does this mean? See, how, how am I supposed to? It says in here, uh, it says, we, we fled from, we fled, uh, they're talking now about, uh, until now our lives have been largely devoted from running from pain and problems. We 
fled from them as a plague. We never wanted to deal with the fact of suffering. To escape the day of the bottle was always our solution. Character building, though suffering was, might be all right for saints, but certainly didn't feel to us. Then in AA, we looked and listened. Everywhere we saw failure and misery transformed by humility. Humility is what we're talking about now in step seven, about what it is and how you get it. And exactly in a performance, going to people and God, getting away from self, being a, now you're a giver. You're not a taker. This is your life that you're doing now. Doing things with no recognition, no acknowledgement. This is something you're going to benefit by, but it's going to be an inside job. The benefit that you receive is the benefit that they're describing here. The benefit is living this life, not your life, not your ideas, not your way. This is the new method they're talking about. A different system, a different way of thinking, acting, being. So it says in here, then in A, we looked and listened. Everywhere we saw failure and misery transformed by humility into priceless assets. We we heard story after story of how humility had brought strength out of weakness. In every case, pain had been the price of admission into the new life. But this admission price had purchased more than they expected. It brought a measure of humility, which we soon discovered to be a healer of pain. We began to fear pain less and desire humility more than ever. This is where the part I found out, that as an alcoholic, right now, where I'm at now, that when I give a little, I get a little. Meaning that I can stay sober, that I don't have to be falling down drunk, that I don't have to be the same character I was. But this is only a part of it. This is only a beginning. This is only a small, small, just a, just a, a, a like opening a door and looking in. Because I found out that the more I give, not take, give, that covers a lot of ground. That covers money. That covers sleepless nights. That covers lost meals. That covers gasoline. That covers a lot of things, a lot of effort, a lot of pain up in the brain, of thinking. And then going back to the God for more power, for more ideas, for more help, and going again. This is where it's at now. This is giving a self so that I benefit by it, not the other person, not the other alcoholic. If he benefits, that's God's business, not mine. I can't get me sober. I can't get him sober. I can't give me this understanding. How can I give it to him? I can't. So I must be a giver, not a taker. This is a, this is an inside job now with a relationship to a power greater than me for my life to do for me what I can never do for myself. And this is step seven now. This is now in a position, in an order form, so that there's something going to follow this now, but it can't be there unless this is done. This is another step, the same as the rest of them were, that one must come before the other. Seven, seven weeks go a great deal on it. Seven weeks stay on it and really, really pound away on that. But step nine, may direct the minister to such people who are responsible except when to do so but injure them or others. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. I'm trying to get away from this here. Uh, uh, made a list of all persons who were harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Uh, step eight, uh, I have, the only problem I had with, with step eight that I can remember, that I see, that I recognize and know in that, is that I I did have a list of, and there was a lot of people, I, I've made direct amends, and I've done, I've made a list, of, and I've covered the list and everything else, but I never understood the meaning behind the harm in there. Because the other harms that I that I considered, or I recognized, or I listed even, were always had something to do with the, Stealing, cheating, sex-wise, uh, had something to do with uh, fighting, uh, hurting people, getting hurt, things like that. Uh, that was what I thought it was all about. And so the the full the full application of this step, I thought I had to, I had done it. In fact, I did I did make a list of everybody that I could think of, even my wife that I'd taken through the drinking days. Uh, I had done I had done all of these things, but I never considered in here. Uh, it says some 
gross uh, misbehavior is not by any means a full catalog of such harms we do. Let us think of some of the more subtle ones, which we uh, uh, subtler ones, which we can sometimes be quite be quite as damaging. Suppose that our family life we happen to be miserably irres uh, miserably irresponsible, uh, callous, or cold. Suppose that we are ir irritable, critical, impatient, or humorless. Suppose we lavish attention upon one member of the family and neglect the others. What happens when we try to dominate the whole family, either by rule of iron or by the constant outpouring of minute directions for just how their life shall be lived from hour to hour? What happens when we wallow in depression, self-pity, oozing from every pore, and inflict that upon those about us? Such a roster of harms done others, the kind that make daily living with us practicing alcoholic difficult and often unbearable. Could be extended almost indefinitely when we take such personality traits into those shops, office, and society of our fellows. They can do damage almost as extensive, extensive as that we have caused at home. Uh, the, the point here was the fact that, uh, was the treatment that I would give. Now, in my home, I didn't have any kids. So, hold it. Okay. <laughs> uh, step eight. Uh, made a list of all persons we had hired and became willing to make amends for them all. Is that I was willing to do anything at all as so long as I knew how to do it or the direction or the way it was presented to me. And so the hardest part about this, of course, was the fact that the reason, the true reason, the reasoning behind of making a list of all these people I had harmed and why I become willing to make amends to them all because uh, the the amends that I needed to make, the obvious ones, I could make easy. Uh, so to make a list, I could put a lot of people down for a lot of reasons. And so I even, like I said I had before, I had I even had my wife's name on there. And so uh, the benefit of of, of the of the uh, the meaning behind the application of making a list uh, was to straighten out a lot of, uh, or have a lot of my past uh, that I could do something about that so that I didn't have to carry the past or relive the past or stay in the past. And so to make, so in step nine, when I, when I got to, uh, to, to nine, to make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when they do so with injure them or others, I, everything was pretty clear to me. Everything was, and I did make a list, I, and I did go to these people, and my father, and mother, and uh, my <coughs> sister, and, uh, and, and everybody, I did it, I did exactly what I was supposed to do according to what I believed at the time of the list, and also the kind of harm that I'd done, except I didn't do my wife, and the reason why is, uh, at that time, I suppose is the same reason that I guess any alcoholic wouldn't do it, is that uh, I was going to do it. And I kept putting it off. And by me putting it off, I had a better than uh, two and a half years when I was in this, now making the beginning uh, of this year application for to treat my alcoholism, my brain, and that. And so it came to the place that I kept putting it off, but I kept being the same man about her as I was in the beginning. In other words, I could, I would, I wouldn't deliberately, uh, uh, knowingly hurt her. Uh, but I would think it though. I would entertain the thought. I would think that she's uh, not performing well. Anyway, what I'm driving at now is the fact that is that uh, three and a half years now came, and uh, she got sick on a Thursday, and she died on the Sunday morning. In four days, she was dead. And in that four days, uh, I lived uh, I lived in living hell because of the the. Uh, she was in the hospital, and uh, she was very sick in the oxygen and so forth. And I never did, I never once ever made any direct amends to her about my past. Uh, I had a sponsor that showed me letters, and uh, said in the, which the letters said that uh, she had written to him about my performance, what I was doing, how we were getting along, and so forth. And uh, he was doing that to try to ease my mind by, by showing me that she did understand, and she did know that I was... Uh, I'm not the same man, and that I was uh, trying the best I could, and so forth. But that wasn't good enough for me, though, because I knew that that wasn't true. It wasn't true at all because I didn't do anything about it. I didn't do what the steps said to do, and I didn't receive the benefit from the steps, which is the intent of it there, to make direct amends to those. Because this.
this uh, this harm that I did her uh, is something that I wouldn't do. Now, other people, my, like my dad, I did go to my dad, and I did talk to him and, and try to tell him and try to let him know that the performance I did, the things I did, the way I treated him, how did I beat the man up one time even, and uh, things like that was, well, I was living a life then that I couldn't control, that the alcohol had my brain so bad that I damaged and I hurt people that I was so sorry for and that I was trying to straighten out my life today and make amends and, and try to make up or try to do something to show them that I'm not that person no more. And uh, and uh, and I did do that. I did benefit from that, but I didn't benefit from my wife. And so I paid the price. I lived another couple of years reliving all the experiences, all the bad thoughts, all the bad deeds, all the bad mind that I had produced uh, because I didn't apply the step. I did not use the step in, in a place where I should have used it. Uh, the purpose behind nine, I believe. I think I don't think there's a great uh, there's a great amount in nine that has to be discussed unless it's on a one-to-one -one, uh, in, in a person, in real person, in a personal way or, or to help. So step 10. Step 10 is uh, continue to take personal inventory one where Rob promptly admitted it. Is, uh, is my, I had a sponsor that right away he started, this is one of the steps I told him I ain't never going to do. I told him to just stick that one. And uh, because when he told me what I'm, what it means and what it's about as far as about uh, being wrong and properly admitted, and uh, uh, that's something I couldn't buy. I just couldn't understand that. I just wouldn't accept that. So, but here's the way he told me about. It. This is the way I learned it. This is what was given to me. Is that step ten says continue to take a personal inventory when we're wrong, properly admitted. Was that this is the help me in the day I'm in, in the performance I'm in, where I'm trying to live accordingly now to the principles and the steps, so that. I won't use or won't bring back into my life known defects of character. That I do have something now for not only an awareness, awareness, but I have a living life with a living God, a living power that I'm going to use daily to treat my alcoholism. And so in this respect, then, this is promptly admitted. He says promptly admitted to God. And then he said, and also that's, that's this day today, when you do this, when you are in that performance. So... He said, but it also has another effect. He said, and the other effect is, is that these, what they're talking about in the beginning, uh, is, are the known defects of character. That means that the, the character you are, you have these defects of character in you, and you can be producing and using them defects of character for your life as the day goes on. He said, but there's also another factor. He said, there's also other defects of character that are not yours that you will acquire in sobriety that you will entertain these thoughts you will do these things and you will achieve or have new defects of character defects of character you didn't bring here defects of character you didn't have when you were drinking this is also for that reason because this is alcoholism we're talking about and this is a, another way for an alcoholic do something and excuse himself, or to do something and get away, I think he's going to get away with it. And yet, though, it wasn't a thing that was on your list that you did in four, it's something you shared in five, and something that God took away in six. This is something that isn't even there in them steps, but this is something brand new. Uh, and so there was, I found out that there was defects of character that I was using and thinking about or getting away with that I didn't even recognize or didn't have on any kind of list of any time. Didn't even consider it, and this is after some years of sobriety. Now I'm talking about this wasn't uh, this wasn't when I was struggling with with an unknown method of living or anything like that. And so, the step ten is is really uh, it's a it's a it's an ongoing process, which all the steps are according to accordingly, but it's also a, an ongoing process of the correction or the of the performance uh, that I'm in that has to be watched real carefully. That has to be considered real carefully uh, each and every day because, you know, on, uh, on, on page 90 uh, where it says it's a spiritual action that every time we're disturbed, no matter what the cause, there's something wrong with us. Uh, what, what that meant to me is that I could sit or I could be in the world I'm in today uh, at any time, at any place, 
and uh, I can become very, very upset. I can become really upset. And what I'm upset about uh, is really has no importance at all for my life. It has nothing to do with it. It doesn't affect my life one bit. Not one bit does it affect it. But it's bothering me. It's upsetting me. It's making me very, very upset, very, uh, very angry uh, inside. It's, it's hurting me. And I'll, and I'll do this, and I'll entertain this. And it always has something to do maybe with someone else. And, uh, and yet, though, I know that alcoholism is a disease of the mind. I know that I cannot, I cannot entertain thoughts powered by self, coming from self, using self in that respect. I can't do it because I must call in a power greater than me to help me figure out my life today or to do my life today. And yet, though, I'll still go ahead and I'll consider certain places or certain things or thoughts uh, that bother me, upset me. And there's something the matter with me, it says here, the spiritual axiom, because I had a, I had to understand what an axiom, I didn't know what an axiom was. And uh, then uh, uh, it was explained to me that an axiom is something that doesn't need an explanation, it displays itself, it shows itself, it's, it's self, uh, <coughs> it's, it's all of the, the the axiom is always, uh, eight years, I, would say, I would be able to recognize or see or know something that's going on, and uh, I don't have to be told. And like when I would be angry, I didn't have to tell you I was angry. You knew that by the way I talked, the way I looked, and how I acted. And so that axiom, see, when they said a spiritual axiom, meant that I'm without... I'm, I'm lacking spiritual guidance or help or understanding or the relationship to a power and so on. And so this here, I wouldn't accept. I wouldn't buy this. I just wouldn't. I just absolutely said, no, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. I'm entitled to get mad at certain things because certain things are going on too much, too heavy, too long, too many times, and so forth. I'm, in, I'm entitled to have feelings. I'm entitled to think the thoughts that I'm thinking, because I've done the very best I can do, and they still won't change. The people still want to say and do their things, and so I'm going to show them now that this isn't the way it should be. I don't see the application now. I don't understand. I don't relate a principle there. I don't relate my life to a principle for any guidance or any direction coming from this particular step for the, the reason that's there. And the and Yet, though, I'll say after a meeting, I'll say the Lord's Prayer. And I'll say in the prayer the words that are in there for a special reason, see. And even in the serenity prayer, see. And I don't know that principles that they're talking about here is the principles that if I will use principles, if I'll, if I'll treat my neighbor as I'd like to be treated, that's a principle. That when I do that, I receive back results that are proven, that are good, that work, and so that means that there's something there in a performance that's based on something that works, something that produces something that's, that I need. I need to have this. I need to understand that if I love my neighbor as myself, there's a principle there. So step 10 is where this year was now coming to light to me, that all of these things they're showing you now in the steps are things that I must do. I must not read them. I must not listen to them. I must not hear you. But I must do something now along this here direction or this way or this method that they're talking about here. And if I will do this method, I will get some, I will, I will receive some of a different life or a different way, a different, uh, different result. And so step 10 now started opening up into where uh, other people, and because it says in here, it says, can't we, can't we properly be, be properly angry with self-righteous, uh, with self-righteous folks? For us, I mean, hey, these are dangerous exceptions. They're talking about justifiable anger, and if somebody <coughs> cheats us, or we're, we're supposed to be entitled to get mad. And it says in here is that we have found that justified anger ought to be left to those better qualified to handle it. And so this year now is a great deal about, uh, about a character. This is step 10. Now. And the character that I'm trying to be is the character that's going to be based on principles that are already there, that are established. They're not something that I have to 
trial and error. I have to try to uh, I have to try to see if they work. I don't have to try to see if they fit uh, certain people. They fit my life, and wherever my brain is, my life, my brain is being treated with with principles that are guiding and directing it. And so the thought process that's needed is already established. It isn't something that I have to get ready for. It's not something that's going to fit certain situations at certain times for certain reasons. This is now where the character that I want to be all the time, I can be this character, because the character that's needed for this now is already in the living, performing life with a great deal already established, already there. Because step 10 is that the daily is where the daily reprieve that was talked about. It's also that uh, uh, an inventory is going on all the time. It's not an inventory like four was done to get rid of something and, and, uh, and now you're past it. So it's like it's an alcoholism. It's got it's got a treatment and now the treatment is going to fix tomorrow and then anything else from that point on. Uh, there's nothing like that. And this is hard. This is hard for me to understand because why should I entertain a thought right now, wherever I'm at, that's causing me trouble or disturbing me or bothering me or making my life unmanageable? Why should I have anger or hatred or any of these other things that I've learned are the things that were killing me, the things that were causing my life so that I had to drink? And I'm sober now and I'm starting to entertain the same thoughts, the same things that I had to drink over. I had to drink to get away from these here things that I couldn't stand. In other words, the alcohol that was treating my alcoholism, I'm sober now, and I'm starting to go back into that same type of thinking, the same type of thinking without the alcohol. And this is where now we're step 10 on the inventory. This is all about this now. This isn't like Levin, what Levin's going to do or say or anything else is in, in uh, step 10. There's another step, I believe. I know that all steps are important. I know that. But I know that each step, and certain steps at certain times are more important than others because they have a greater impact or they have a better, a, a, a bigger effect on the condition of my life today or where I'm at today in my life and the problems or the troubles or the brick walls that I run into. The step itself, one particular step, step the principles that come from that seem to take away the hurt or the troubles of the day. It makes the day more, more, more of a day it should be. And so this step now is another step that is in that category, as far as I'm concerned, that the thoroughness is needed for my life in an application form. This has got to, I, I must stay here until I understand, not understand in the effect that I'm going to do that, but to understand the need of this step in an application form so that my alcoholism now can grow or go into a, a different method or a different way of life. And all through, all through uh, uh, on step 10, they're talking about self, or what self has to do, and about how where self needs self-restraint and, and uh, a willingness to admit the fault, where it lies in self. And, and it's all talking about self in a performance, about coming from doing things that are very disturbing, very wrong, into doing things now that can be corrected. The willingness to do it. The, 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 the place it lies is in me. It's in my brain. And this is step 10. We went through this way down earlier of recognizing four and five, admitting, accepting that this now is something I can accept because I've already have recognized and I already have accepted me for who I am with all these defects. And here they're showing me now how not to use them defects and how not to how to recognize them or to be aware of them. And also, if any, anything else appears, if uh, some brand new ideas come in that are going to hurt me or hurt you, I can't use them. I can't, I can't entertain that kind of thing. <coughs> you know, uh, that, that, you know. And they're talking in here about the evening uh, coming up before we go to sleep and that. Uh, I think I think that all of these here things here, you, you can go into great detail about this here in step 10, about the thoroughness of this day to day of trying to be with the power greater than me, trying to change, trying to see where the, if I miss the mark and don't know it, I could recognize it or I could become aware of it so that I don't have to keep missing the mark. I don't have to keep suffering from my own selfish self or from my own performance that I give. So step 10, why 
should I be willing, as an alcoholic, why should I be willing to accept less than what God wants me to have? Or why should I be willing to accept this day as a day of trouble, adversity, of trouble, of, of all kinds of making, whether they're my own making or whether it's the world out there? Because I learned that this world I live in, there's going to be there's going to be trouble, there's going to be tragedy, there's going to be adversity, there's going to be sickness, there's going to be loss of money, divorce, health, and so forth and so on. There's going to be that because the world turns that way, though it's the way life lies. But I don't have to accept that as the final answer, as the final word or the final result. I don't need to because I do have something now that's great, far greater than whatever I could produce and even in thought or in deed that this power that I'm talking about can always do better than I can do, that can do things I can't do. And this intent is where this has to be in an application form so that I can have what God wants me to have today and I can be the character he wants me because this step here will tell me, show me, and let me be aware of me when I'm not that man. And I'm not going to be satisfied today and from this point on with anything at all or anything less than what self does or what self will produce. I just won't go. I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't have to no more. I don't need to. I don't have to be, I don't have to be, I don't have to do less than anything now, than 10. Because now 10, uh, it, it, it ends 10, it says, having so considered the day, not of, not, omitting to take due note of things well done, have and having searched our hearts with neither fear nor favor, we can truly thank God for the blessings we have received and sleep in good conscience. And I learned a long time ago exactly what that means, because I go to bed at night, meeting the end of the day, whatever that was, and I would end that day, and I had seen great troubles. I had seen loss of property, money, and possessions, and all kinds of, of, of what I considered the, the dirty side, the downside, or bad side of life, and so I would I would go through experiences like that, and, and then at that night, I still during the day I didn't lose the relationship with God, I didn't die, I didn't have to get drunk, I didn't have to kill anybody, I didn't have to lose the life that God has presented me with the with the recovery program. I didn't have to, I didn't like it, I didn't understand a lot of those things, but the relationship I had with that God, made sure that each and every day I knew I was being taken care of. I knew that he was protecting me. No harm would come to me. I was going to be all right regardless of what I thought each and every day. I never lost that one thing, never. Even in the hospital when you were in there with Walter, when that doctor told me what he told me, it blew me away. I lost it for a little while. But then the relationship back to God for my life, regardless of what's going to happen, had to be reestablished. That I was already. Right. Same thing. Same thing. Step 11 sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for his knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. I got hooked up a long time ago when this was going on with another book. And the other book was The Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox. And in that that book there, I found out an application that would do exactly what this says would do here. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious, my conscious contact with God as we, as I understand them, understood them. Praying only for the knowledge of His will for me and the power to carry that out. And I found out that that's what I needed to know, but I found out that that has to come from a living God is what they're referring to as far as I'm concerned. And this means that I must have this today, now, and the now is every minute that I live in. And so this is some, this is really important. Uh, that I believe that the quality of my life, I believe that the quality of my relationship with God is where everything lies, where everything comes from, where everything originates, where everything is guaranteed, where everything is the same today and each and every day that I live in is the same. And I think that this here, if it's not understood, I believe that I keep running elsewhere for protection, for care, for to get out of harm's way. I think so. And the reason I do that is because I, at one time I used to have to do things a certain way. And then 
all of a sudden now I found out that I don't need to do certain things certain ways. All I have to do is relate my life to God for my life and the thoughts, the deeds, the actions, everything is going to be supplied without me having to know what they are ahead of time. I have I have to have that understanding that, that who that's who God is and that's who I am. So I'm an alcoholic, a real alcoholic, meaning that without this God, this Paul says, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get drunk. I'm gonna to go to hell again. And this is a positive thing. This is a thing that's already established now. This isn't something I need to think about. This is something I know. This is something I believe. And I get this way only because of what's happened to me up to this point. That every time that I get into the picture, every time that I want things, every time I do things without the presence of God, it's not lasting, it's temporary, it's something that I don't benefit by, it's something that's there that will disturb me, cause me trouble, it's something that I'm fighting all the time, wanting to know the right thing, the right time, to do something, to think something, to be somebody. I'm in conflict with, with ideas that I, that I got going in my head, and it's only because they're in my head. They're all alone. They're in there because I put them there, or I'm using it. And the freedom that I have in Alcoholics Anonymous, in my life, because of Alcoholics Anonymous, is going to be there now because of this. This step here, I believe, is, is the step now that's the guarantee, like the others are, guarantees, of course. But this one here is the thing that's going to, if I don't do this, now this is where I learned that if I don't talk to God, then I talk to me. And I don't care where I'm at. I don't care if I'm on my knees, in bed, at work, driving a car, talking to a gal, looking at this, looking at that. If I don't ask God to be with me, to allow me to be with him, to help me understand, to help me know what it is to see, to have, to do, I must talk to I must, I must talk to me. But I can't do that. I can't do that with success. Now, I don't know how many alcoholics are around that want to believe this, or want to even try this, or want to even accept this. I don't know. That isn't important. What's important is that I know this. I believe this. When I look at you, don't you know that sometimes I want to judge you severely? I want to, I want to, I want to rattle you. I want to. I want to say words to you to let you know where you really are. But I can't do that. I'm not allowed to do that. I want to do that, but I can't do that. Don't you know that I will hurt you, and I know that. I don't want to suffer for that because I will suffer for that. The relationship for my life today is from learning process that produce principles in step 11. Only 11 now is what we're talking about now. Because we're talking about a will that's not my will. The wording of 11 is so very important because I won't accept words no more as words are. In other words, that this here, what it says in here, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. Praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Man, that's, that's covering a lot of ground now. That's going really into this world for a different purpose entirely. That's something I can't do, something I wouldn't know how to do, something that I don't want to do. And yet, though, this step here is a step I don't believe that anybody talks about. This step is like step, step seven. Because everybody says, turn it over. That's what I was told. I was taught. In AA, turn it over. And I don't know what turn it over means. Because to me, turn it over means pray. Okay, so I pray. But I act after I pray the same way I would have acted without the prayer. It doesn't make any difference. And I don't understand this, see? I don't know what this step means as an alcoholic. Man, this is this here. No, this is a, this is another thing now that we I don't remember us even talking about it. The retreats we go to, even you know, uh, I don't I don't recall any anyway. But but uh, it's certainly uh, it's certainly something that's that's the eleven. I believe that that eleven the eleven.
11 step, the uh, 12 steps, the 11 steps, at, at, at the 11 step, the whole spiritual life, the spiritual awakening, the spiritual, anything referring that way in your the first 164 pages in your big book is based on when you're here, not when you're somewhere else. Because it, it, the next step will clarify that or clear that or make that, make that more understandable. But while you're in 11, though, and what they're saying in 11 there, it, 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 it carries, uh, it carries results that are told here that if you will do this, then this God will do this. And you can have this. In step 11, it's a, there's a lot of pages in 11 that has to be considered and read and looked at against when they started. I started down here in one, and there's only four pages down here in one. There's four pages. There's only two pages on each side. So there's four pages here. But this one here, there's so much in here to do and so much in here to have. And so they're talking in here about prayer and meditation and all kinds of things. This step here is uh, uh, it's, it's more than what we can even talk about here. Explain. An application form. Uh, the meaning behind it, I think, is pretty good when it says thought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. So I could stay here. We could stay here for a long time. So we'll go, to, we'll go through 12 anyway, for quite Step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and practice these principles in all our affairs. And the, the, uh, we, I think we went through this a little bit, but here it says in here, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. They're talking about the other 11 steps. They're not talking about the 12 step now. They're talking about what's already has happened, taken place, it's established, it's done, it's okay. It's there. Now they're saying this, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of this, of these steps, it says we tried to carry this message. Now, the main thing there was that there's a message now. There wasn't a message before. Now there is a message. And they're talking now about this message, meaning that the 12 steps, the 11 steps that we have went through, we're in the 12 steps, but the 11 steps we went through is a message. There's a message here, from here to here. So this is the message. It says we tried to carry this message. They're talking about this message now, not what somebody might think or not something that I believe that's not here or that I think out of my head. This here is what I call the word, you see. And so this is a message that we try to carry, this message, not my message, not your message, not any, any human power's message, this message, you see. And to practice these principles, practice these principles, what principles, see? The principles that are already established from an application that have a basis and a foundation, that have a beginning and an end, which is the truth, and which works, and, it, and it's already there. It's established. It's not something that you have to think, like say, I think this might work. I think this, that. I mean, you don't have to go on that basis anymore. If, you, if I was, I was told that if I will follow directions, if I will do the things that are necessary, I too can have the same results as my sponsor had. That's what he told me. He said, this is the way it works. I'm going to show you a way of living where drink is not necessary. I'm going to show you a way of living that's not trial and error. It's not something that might work. It only works a certain time for certain people, certain events, certain happenings. This is a proven way that works every time. He said, I'm going to take the bumps out of the road. I'm going to make it a little easier for you to do something. If you'll follow directions and listen to what I say and try the very best that you can do, and you will get the results that are needed for your life. So I don't know. See, now, them words are real strange to me then. They didn't make too much sense, you know, because I couldn't understand that logic or that concept or that way of thinking because my method of thinking always came from here. And it always already was there in a power form to do what I thought was necessary, what I thought was best. Now we're totally trying to do something far removed from me, something that, that I have no power to do anyway. And so they practice these principles. The principles are already established. 
they are there, but they're they're many and they're growing. But they are going in a way of life that can be there for each and every alcoholic in all of his affairs, not just where it's needed or anything like that. The uh, uh, the book. This book here talks in here about about the alcoholics being given the gift, the free gift is what it's called here. And this free gift is the grace of God. This that I believe is the grace of God anyway. And so I had to understand all of this here is something that is being presented to me for my life that I'm going to benefit for it. It's for me. It's not for my neighbor. It's not for nobody else at all. It's for me, only me. And this here means that my life has to be important to me. And it did become very important to me. My life is very important to me today. Everything I see, everything I know, everything I hear, everything I'm a part of must be in direct relationship to God in an acknowledgement to God for my life that's there today. I don't, I do count my blessings, but I know my, but what my blessings are, but only because of the relationship with God, of going to God, praising God, thanking God, acknowledging God for my life, for a living God, not a praying God that I used to do or the God of ritual. Now, this here is very important to me, and I don't know if it's important to you, but it's very important to me. Because I must recognize right now, this very minute, where all of my life lies, where everything comes from, I must acknowledge to God that he's there, that I need him. I must talk to this guy. I must I must do this all the time. I'm an alcoholic. I've got a brain now that doesn't want me to do that. I've got a brain that says do something else. i got a brain that wants to be pleased. But I can't have it the way I want it. But I can have something else that God wants me to have, and that's what I want. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.